corner there. You ought to be a boy scout. You're a fine looking fella and I know you'd make a jolly good backwoodsman by the look of you. You're ugly enough anyway. And you girl there, no I don't mean you, I mean the pretty one behind you. You ought to be a girl guide, you know. Oh, you are one. Last summer's Scout Jamboree in Holland, bringing together young people from 167 countries, was the legacy of one man. Baden Powell has claimed a new follower every five seconds for the past 90 years. Apart from the great religions and political ideologies, scouting is the largest movement in the history of the world. What's amazing to me is that a man who led such a admittedly bizarre life should 50 years after his death have ended up with a worldwide movement of 25 million people who are proud enough to call themselves scouts. Robert Baden Powell is one of the most famous and influential Englishmen of the century. He was blessed with an instinctive empathy for children. Through the scouts, he gave them the chance to experience his vision of boyhood, a time of adventure, self-development, and good, clean fun. But in recent years, he's fallen from grace, castigated as a militarist, a sadist, even a fascist sympathizer, accusations that would have startled the celebrated boy man. If only he'd had the gift of eternal youth, Baden Powell would never have needed to invent the Boy Scouts. Entranced by J.M. Barry's Peter Pan, he saw it three times in its opening week. His only son, Peter, was named after it. And he wrote to one woman that his ideal partner would be a sort of girl, Peter Pan. Scouting would become Baden Powell's way of retreating back into the world of boyhood. The really essential meaning of scouting to Baden Powell, it was above all things an escape. He felt deeply attracted to boyhood in a way that subsequent generations didn't. And the wonderful thing for Baden Powell and for many scoutmasters was that through scouting you could rediscover it and re enter the magic world of boyhood. Baden Powell sometimes talked about himself as, as being a boy man, and he, he suggested to scoutmasters that they'd understand boys much better if they could relearn boyhood and become boy men. It was an escape from responsibility and it was escape from, from women, from having to think about his own sexuality, from everything. It was a kind of return to boyhood where he could be free, free of the competitiveness which his mother had forced on him and, and able really to somehow rediscover what he'd lost. In fact, Stevie, as Baden Powell was known for much of his life, never did have a happy childhood. When he was three, his father, a clergyman and Oxford professor, died of pneumonia. His mother, Henrietta Grace, was a domineering woman with an extravagant lifestyle. Her principal aim for the children was that... They should be pleased to do my will. She was a martinet. She was a very commanding woman. If one sees pictures of her, she is red-haired, she's big, she's buxom, and she was determined that her children would be very great within the British Empire. Financially, she managed them as any businessman would manage the business. And at the start of their careers, they actually used to sit around the dining room table and virtually put money into a central kitty on the table. And she would extract hers and then dole out the pocket money to them. 
winning his mother's love and approval meant everything to Baden-Powell. When she died, he wrote in the Scout magazine, Has it ever struck you what it means to your mother if you turn out to be a waster? She'd hoped you would make a good name for yourself, but if you do not show grit and keenness, her heart grows cold with disappointment. At school, he was already disappointing his mother. As a pupil at Charter House in the 1870s, his academic record was lamentable. In his day, it was unfashionable for boys to work hard, and he was evidently a slave to fashion. A good comic actor and very gifted artist, he always preferred drawing to learning. His school reports testify to his chronic laziness. Natural sciences pays not the slightest attention. Mathematics has to all intents given up the study of mathematics. French could do well but has become very lazy, often sleeps in school. Classics takes very little interest in his work. Instead, he spent hours in the woods near the school, caught up in a fantasy world of cowboys and Indians. I used to imagine myself as a backwoodsman and scout. I used to creep about warily, knowing that redskins were around in the shape of masters looking for boys out of bounds. I'd look for signs and get close-up observations of rabbits, squirrels and rats. As a trapper, I set my snares and when I caught a rabbit, I learned by painful experience to skin, clean and cook it. Not surprisingly, he failed to get to Oxford, where his father and two elder brothers had been. Another disappointment for mother. Full of misgivings, he joined the Hussars, coming a shining second out of 700 applicants. But a military career wasn't his own choice. He wanted to be an artist or actor, but mother had insisted on the cavalry. His first posting was to Lucknow in India. He was deeply unhappy there. Though a grand city of the Raj, Lucknow was unbearably hot rife with cholera and typhoid. His depression only lifted when he met Kenneth McLaren, a young officer nicknamed The Boy because of his childish good looks. They became the closest of friends. Not long after they met, McLaren's mother died. Poor little chap. I've been trying to comfort him but I break down more than he does, almost. He's so awfully cut up. The two men became inseparable and set up house together. Baden-Powell described the boy as my best friend in the whole world. Male friendships were a terribly important factor in Victorian society. I mean, particularly for men who'd been educated at public schools and served in the army overseas. Prostitutes were taboo. There was no opportunity to meet um, members of your own nationality with the opposite sex. So baden Powell's friendships were of vital importance, particularly his friendship with McLaren. And this went far further than friendship. It was really a love affair. 